Right, today we're going to be planting a sickle pear tree in the end, but I'm going to start off with some stuff that I did in the garden this morning. And first thing was I wanted to get a bed full of these uh, shallots in. And I saved the shallots, saved some from uh, last year. And I'm just planting them and I'm picking through them now. This year they uh, didn't really store so good with the warm winter. My root cellar didn't really get cold enough till about January. So I do have quite a few that um, are getting soft and stuff that I'm going to have to toss. But, you know, there definitely were plenty to plant this bed full here. And uh, hopefully I'll have a good harvest. And it's time to go over and uh, plant a couple more of these bins here. I'm just going to turn them over there and uh, get them ready to go. You know, having these uh, individual little raised beds is really nice because it's like you just do one at a time when you feel like doing something. And uh, you don't have to, it's not really a big deal. It's really easy. And uh, I'm going to throw a bucket of my compost in there once I got it turned over. Somehow it seems like, uh, you know, you lose about a bucket every year anyway. And then I'm just going to rake it over in this bin. I'm throwing some more carrots in and... Same thing, I'm just moving down to the next one here, and this is going to be another bin of carrots going in to get it turned over and get some compost in it and get it planted. And then that last one there, I put beets in, and uh, it's uh, the five, uh, the silver beet, the five uh, flavor. And then it was time to get out the little uh bees here and it's so nice to have them back out there blown in the wind and in the meantime ups dropped off my tree that i had ordered now this spent a uh, last week coming across the country in a ups truck so i'm just can't wait to see what kind of shape it's in but uh we like seckle pears and they're hard to find anymore so I found this uh, sickle pear tree online, and I decided to order it. Uh, my wife's birthday is coming up, so I figured I'd uh, give her a tree for her birthday. So this is how it arrived. Uh, it didn't look too bad. I'm surprised after spending like seven days in a the truck. They did pack it up good, and uh, it's a little bit bigger um, stem than I thought. It's about a three-quarter inch stem on the tree, so it is nice. Not really straight or anything, but... You know, that's, that's the way most trees come these days. And they did wrap it up really good in the saran wrap stuff that stretched tight. And in there they put some hay, a little bit of straw actually, that was moistened when they wrapped it up. And there still was some moisture in there. So, looks like uh, it should be good. I'm, I'm hoping so. I just thought I'd show you how these trees come. And you can see it's all trimmed in. Actually, the roots on it are all completely trimmed, too, so there's really no trimming going to be needed. But when you open it up, they tell you the first thing to do is to soak it in a bucket of water for uh, at least an hour before you plant it, just to help rejuvenate it there. So I got it soaked for an hour, and now I'm just going to take the cart down. It's so nice to have this thing out and being usable again. Take that down and go plant it. And I decided I'm not going to plant it up by the apple trees because they attract too many deer. And I don't want the deer to be chewing on this. So I'm hoping that they'll stay away if I put it down in the corner of the old garden there. So first thing you got to do is dig a hole and make sure that you dig it big enough to uh, comfortably fit the tree. We'll speed it up here. And you can see this is in the old garden soil, so it's fairly easy to dig and... It's just kind of unbelievable the number of worms that I've been digging up here. You can see there's like, like there's probably at least 500 worms in the, those shovels full that I got out of this already. Just unbelievable. They're all in there now. Wow. So I'll spend a little time digging a hole big enough to fit the tree, and I'm going to check it here. You can see it's uh, just a little bit deeper than what the tree is. Now these trees, you want to make sure that you plant them below the graft. You don't want the um, dirt coming up in that grafted area. You want to keep it below it because you can grow a second set of roots if you do that and destroy the tree. So then it's down to the compost pile and fill up a bucket. I'm going to put a bucket of that in. And this kind of has been really great compost that I made. Uh, it's hard to believe that this was just a bunch of, you know, rotted old butternut squashes and plant vines and stuff like that. It's uh, really just like nice black gold dirt here. 
I grab a bucket of that and uh, take it up and put some in the bottom of the hole for the, the tree to sit on. Give it a little bit of a start. And nice having the cart out because it's all loaded down with all the things that we use, like uh, these knee pads and stuff like that. So just go grab a couple of them, and they keep you from getting soaking wet knees when it's you know springtime like this and the ground is still damp. So it's kind of hard to plant this thing straight because it's got a nice curve in it. There you can see it looks like it must have been a um, a branch that they cut off that was curving up and just grafted onto a root. But uh, I'll just average that out and, you know, try to get it as straight as I can. And I get some compost in there and then I'm just going to take some of that dirt, which really is nice uh, fertile dirt too. So, And this tree is supposed to be a self-pollinating tree, but I'm actually going to plant a couple more pear trees right around this uh, before the spring is over. And then... Uh, I kind of like to pack it down to get air out of the roots. And I'm just going to stick one of these fiberglass uh, fence posts, they call them, in uh, to help hold it up. Because we get a lot of wind here and it'll be, get blown right over probably if it starts to get some leaves on. And I'll just drive that in the ground there next to the tree and, you know, I'll tie that up there. And that'll hold it up till it really takes root and gets started. So we got that in there and now it's time to just uh, get a little bit more dirt around to, to get it steadied up. And uh, make sure that you pack it down to get all the air out of it and stuff. And uh, let me go grab the pills I got. I got these little um, fertilizer tablets for when you're starting fruit trees. I got them years ago uh, at a place called Miller Nursery that Stark Brothers actually bought up and moved away from us. But that was my favorite nursery. And they used to sell these uh, these things. And you just put like three pills around the fruit tree and it'll fertilize them for up to two years after you put them in. So I always throw a couple of them in, a couple, maybe about six inches down there. And then I'm just going to kind of level the, fill that in there with some dirt up to the top. And like I said before, you want to make sure that you stay below that um, graph there because uh, otherwise it could cause problems with the tree. All these trees, they basically um, put them on a real hardy, just take a branch and put them on a hardy rootstock. So uh, that's it, basically it. Another couple hundred pounds of forest here to, to press that down and, you know, it's all all pretty much uh, safe to go now. And I'm just going to take that water that I had it soaking in, about two gallons of water there, and I'm just going to soak that good to uh, try to make sure all the air is out of the roots. And just do a little rake in there to, to get kind of like a bowl built around the tree to hold water when I do water it so it doesn't just run off. So you want to build up a little bit higher edge around there so it you know, will hold some of the moisture. And uh, basically it's, a, you know, it's really just like a 10 minute job putting a tree like this in once you soak it. And there it is uh, all ready to go. It's just so nice having those bees out there, just watching them spin and stuff. I love it. So I went up and I uh, cut a piece of an old sweatshirt to have something to tie it up with. I wanted a nice soft tie that wouldn't cut into it. And uh, I'll tie this up in the uh, next couple of weeks. We'll see whether it's uh, dormant or dead. Um, hopefully we'll see some leaves coming up pretty soon. But you never know with uh, bare root trees like this. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.